Arsenal are leading the race for Usman Diamande and Victor Gjokeres. This is big news coming out of Portugal. And look, whilst the summer window is still a while away, there's a lot of football to play before it. I'm very excited for this summer window, and I know a lot of you are as well. If you're new to the channel, please do me a favor. Drop a subscription down below. We're on our way to 10,000 subscribers. The growth of the channel recently has been amazing. The community we're building, it is sensational. If you can like the video as well, it helps it get to further people. Um, so I would be incredibly grateful grateful if you could do that for me. But look, let's get into this news. Um, it is coming from Portugal. Arsenal leading the race for Victor Gjokeres and Usman Diamande. Sporting Lisbon will not negotiate the 100 million euro release clause for Victor Gjokeres. Now, this is coming from a guy called Pedro Supulveda. Um, You might not have heard of him. I hadn't really heard of him. However, he was actually the guy that broke the Fabio Vieira transfer. And if you remember, in 2022, when we signed Fabio Vieira, that transfer really came out of nowhere and he was the first guy. So whilst he might not have his finger on the pulse at Arsenal, uh, he certainly does in Portugal. And when you're looking at transfer rumours, of course, you've got to look at the source. You know, Fabrizio Romano has been talking about Gjokeres to Arsenal quite a lot recently. Uh, he said on court offside, my understanding remains that Arsenal have not opened concrete talks for any striker. But as I've said many times, Victor Gjokeres for sure is one of the options on the list. They've spent months in attendance with their scouts in Portugal to follow the Sweden International's progress. And it may also be, it will also be, that whilst we've been watching Victor Gjokeres, we'll have also been watching his teammate, Usman Diamande. Um, Pedro Sepulveda himself has also said, again, that Arsenal won't negotiate, uh, sorry, that Sporting won't negotiate on the price for Victor Gjokeres. Uh, Frederico Varandas, their president, uh, will not accept less than 100 million euros for the 25-year-old striker. But look, I want to talk about both of them. We've spoken a lot already about Victor Gjokeres on this channel, and I will remind you of why I am captaining the Victor Gjokeres steam train in a little bit. But I want to talk about Usman Diamande because I think this is a really interesting one. Um, and if you've not watched my dream summer transfer window video, then you won't have seen, but Usman Diamande was in the selection of centre-backs that I spoke about. He didn't end up being the number one that I was going to go for, but I certainly wouldn't complain if we ended up getting him. So who is Usman Diamande if you've not heard of him? Because he has relatively burst onto the scene, given the fact that he is still only 20 years old. In fact, he only turned 20 in December. Um, he predominantly plays as a central centre-back for Sporting Lisbon. They play a back three slash back five. He's the central centre-back in that formation. A six foot three, like I said, 20 years old. He's right-footed, but he's very comfortable on both feet. And, you know, I'm just looking at some of the stats across the board. It's another one of these players that looks suitable for Arsenal. And when you're looking at player stats, right, there are some things that you've got to bear in mind. And, one of the big things is how does the team play? And Sporting Lisbon, very much like Arsenal, are a dominant team this year in the Portuguese league. They're top of the league with a game in hand. The way that they play is very nice. There's a reason that Ruben Amarim is heavily linked now to Liverpool, their manager. He's got a lot of things right. And watching them play is very enjoyable. I've been doing Gjokeres watch quite a lot and, uh, and watching Sporting. They're a very good team. And so when you look at the stats for a Diamande, You've got to be careful at what stats you look for. And people make this mistake a lot because he doesn't do an exceptional amount of defending. And an example I'll give you was that last season, people would look at stats and they'd compare Lissandro Martinez and Gabriel. And they'd go, well, Lissandro Martinez has made way more tackles than Gabriel. He's made way more interceptions than Gabriel, therefore better defender. And that's just not the case. It's just that he's had to do more defending. He's playing in a worse team that is set up nowhere near as well as Arsenal. So Martinez has had to do more defending. So they're the sorts of things you've got to be careful with because you can look at some stats and compare them and you go, Usman Diamande is you know, not even in the top 20% of defenders for making tackles. And it's like, okay, but where's he making those tackles and what's the percentage rate? And so I've been digging through some stats for him to kind of see if he'd be a fit at Arsenal and reading some threads about him as well. And, you know, you've got to be careful with football Twitter, but there are some genuinely good um, thread makers on football Twitter about uh, players. And, and the big thing that stands out about Usman Diamande is that he's almost a hybrid of Gabriel and Saliba. He's got the physical attributes of Gabriel in terms of just being an absolute monster. Six foot three, which is actually the same height, I believe, as Saliba, but he is built. 
like he is unbelievably athletic um, and, and is a bit of a bully in that sense. But he's also got that pace and the composure of William Saliba. Uh, and then so I started digging into some statistics. Uh, and this is a comparison here of Van Dijk, Saliba, Unusman Diamande. Now, of course, one thing you've got to bear in mind is that Van Dijk and Saliba are playing in the Premier League. Diamande is playing in the, the Portuguese League. There is a, a difference in that level. However, when it comes to aerial duels, percentage one, again, this is a key. You're looking at percentages, not just the raw numbers. He is basically between Van Dijk, who is at the very top, is unbelievable in the air, and Saliba. He's between those two. Carrying the ball, he's right up there with Van Dijk, which is actually higher than Saliba. Passing, all of them at a very similar level, which is a very, very high level. Forward passes, he's up there with them. Progressive passes, he's up there with Van Dijk. Defensive actions, like I said, there aren't many of them. All of them very low because they all play in very good teams that don't have to do much defensive work. And then dual percentages, one, he's actually better than both of them. Aerial duels, ground duels, he is better than both of them. And this is the big thing. But when you're looking at who we need at Arsenal, you're not looking at someone who has to be an immense defender necessarily. Of course, they have to do the job, but you're also looking at someone who has to be incredibly comfortable in possession, progressing the ball, being comfortable to pass the ball. And I'm looking at his passing uh, statistics here, and they're unbelievable. He's in the top 10%, basically. He's in the top 5%, basically, for passes completed, passes attempted, pass completion rate, total passing distance, uh, progressive passing distance, passes completed. And this is short passes completed. He's in the top like 3% for all of them, basically. Same with medium di uh, distance passes completed. And then the big ones kind of actually when you come down to the long range passing, because that's where the stats drop off, which shows he's not making many long passes. And to be fair, his accuracy when he does that isn't brilliant. But the reason this is key is when you come down to these passes in terms of the number of passes into the final third that he's making, the number of passes into the penalty area that he's making, and the number of progressive passes he's making without doing long balls. And the reason that's key is because it shows you that Sporting, in a similar way to Arsenal, play incredibly high up the field without making any long-range passing. He's in the top 2% of passes into the final third. He's playing it consistently into the final third. And that's something that you have to be comfortable doing if you're going to play for Arsenal. That's what Saliba's doing. That's what Gabriel's doing. And so that is big for me. And that's where you've got to, you know, you've got to kind of pick the stats that you're looking at and see if it's an Arsenal fit as much as it's a, a high-level player. So for me, and, and this is something, by the way, that Rob Edwards spoke about um, after the Arsenal game. He said one of the biggest things about Arsenal at the moment is that they can play any game. They can play the physical, defensive, aggressive game that we saw against Man City. They can play the fluid football game. They can, they can outrun you. And this is where Diamande can do all of those things. Incredibly comfortable on the ball, incredibly comfortable in possession, but also he can do the dirty work. He can be an aggressive, Gabriel-style bully of strikers, but he could also probably drop off and play the Saliba role, the sweeper, because he's got the pace and composure to do that as well. And so do we need Diamande? Well, very possibly. Is it the, the you know, is it a big priority? I think for me, it's the third priority. Um, I do. I think it's third priority, maybe even fourth priority, the defender. When I look at the positions that the, 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 the squad needs, if you go and watch my, again, if you go and watch my, um, my summer, my dream summer transfer window video, I think defender was fourth on the list because I think that a striker, a midfielder and a backup for Bukayo Saka are more important right now. But if you are going to go and spend big money on a defender, I really do think Usman Diamande could be the guy. Now, Hato is very different. Hato I've spoken about previously. I think he's more versatile. I think he's more of a Yuri and Timber style. Could definitely play either fullback. Um, but you do also look at it and you go, right now, I don't think we have a backup for Saliba. We have options, don't get me wrong. You, you know, Ben White, Timber, Tommy Asu. Uh, there are options that can do it, but I don't think we have a real high-level player that would that would push Saliba, for starters, um, but also potentially for Gabriel. You know, Diamande could be a better option than Kivior as the backup for Gabriel, especially if, you know, we were to go and sell Kivior this summer, which... Uh, you know, not that long ago was was genuinely on the cards. I don't think it's on the cards anymore because of how well he's played recently. But look, Usman Diamande, 
would be big. And then Victor Gyrkares, we've spoken about him on this channel before. He's the guy. He's the guy for me. He is the guy for me. Uh, 25 years old. He's having the season of his life, but this has been a a, a momentum thing. You know, this isn't just a one season wonder. He was doing this at Coventry last season and the season before. You know, you look at the way that he's progressed the last few years. He is right up there. 50 goal contributions in 41 games so far this season. He's in the top 6% of players in that league for touches, the top 1% for chances created as a striker. Um, he is the ultimate all-round player for me, you know, when it comes to Arsenal. Like I said, he scored uh, with 22 goals in the league already this season. Um, he's, a, he's a poacher. He massively outperforms on his XG. Um, but he's so comfortable on the ball, and that's the big difference for me. Look, I know some people want Isaac. It's come out recently that it's going to be very, very difficult to get Isaac out of Newcastle. And, uh, and so this is just another tick in the box and another strong source suggesting that Victor Gyrkares could be our guy. And if we went in and did a double swoop, which would be, I mean, look, it, it would be massive if we did do it. I don't know if we will, um, but I would, be, I would be very, very happy to go and do a double sweep from Sporting Lisbon. Usman Diamande so young as well. So much room to improve. Uh, so much room to grow. And imagine, imagine coming in. Apologies, the dog is going crazy. Um, imagine coming in and having Saliba and Gabriel to learn off. You know, if you can go down either route as the centre-back in terms of the role you want to play, Saliba and Gabriel to learn off would be absolutely sensational. Um, so, look, we'll see what happens. As always, this, this channel will have transfer updates. We do them on the evening streams. I'll also make videos like this when we need to. Um, if you've enjoyed the video, if it's been informative for you, please do subscribe, drop a like, and, uh, yeah, Arsenal play Brighton tonight. So, fingers crossed we win that one. Um, but until I see you again on a stream or a future video, have a good one.